Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to another Pro 1v1 match. Today we are on a map called Liquid Gold down in the south for the GLA Stealth in the blue. This is Fargo. All the way up in the north facing him today. The Red China Infantry. This is the one they call Boyka. There's been a lot of games between these lately. This replay got sent to me. I won't tell you by who, but the title of it was Wow, Wow, Wow. <laughs> I've also got another one at a later date just called Wow. So uh, I thought we'd do the Wow, Wow, Wow first. And that is this one. Got a truck rush here from Boyka. And just straight down to the south. The, la the last replay I commentated on. On Liquid Gold, it was actually Fargo against size in that 72 minute epic brawl. And it happens to be the infantry in the same place now. This is the stealth. Was it stealth or GLA in the south? I can't remember. I think it was exactly the same matchup. It's always a bit awkward, is the GLA in the beginning. If you're getting truck rushed like this because your worker often gets stopped, you really want to have some kind of a front position. On these maps where there's like a wide open space going for this truck rush. Seems to get some good damage done. Over on the right side though. We have uh, Fargo establishing himself a tunnel. He has uh, an aggressive worker in the base. A boyker as well. Fargo's currently got all of his workers still alive. He's going to get a vet too. Tentacle will probably get some scrap as well. He does. But there is a helix actually being loaded up from Boyka. It's going to get scouted now, it is seen. Does Fargo expect that this is a Helix? Helix heading straight across the map. Stinger now being built by Fargo. Technical going out. So Technical is going to want to get as much damage as possible. Meanwhile, the Stealth trying not to die to the Helix. The War Factor going down very quick, though. Which is the sheer number of tank enters inside of the Lix. Now focusing on the supply, but it's two stingers being built. Technical gets wasted on the mines, but the trucks are denied from collecting there because of the TNT. Fargo now rebuilding the supply. As long as you get a decent amount of oils, I think losing the arms dealer and supply isn't so bad. As long as you're doing harassment too, which he is. That, that technical could have done a lot more. Maybe he felt pressure to go there because this building... So Boyka has gone for three supplies behind this. Lick's now heading back after taking out the arms dealer and the supply. So it slowed Fargo down, but he's still got a big eco boom from the bottom right oil. These two on the sides and this one and this one. Boyka's now going to send a flame. It's straight away flame down this left one. He licks in the back of the base has been cleared. So is the TNT. So Boyka is now happily collecting on three supplies. The uh, the truck path in here will be messed up a bit. Won't be that efficient because the mines and that also isn't the perfect supply, but the mines haven't spawned underneath the trucks. At least it does mess the path in up on the trucks. Artillery platform now getting taken down by the licks. This is out so much damage that licks. It's almost full. Seven tank enters inside. Fargo trying to creep forward with another tunnel, but this one's going to get stopped. Fargo also has this oil up in the top right, but he's going to come in and just outright kill that building. Fargo creeping forward here. Suits the GLA, really. You build one tunnel, you grab two buildings, you build another tunnel, you grab another building. It's quite a hard position then to crack for the China. Uh, bunker will be dropped down at the top now. The mines will give that some protection as well. Probably you want to get a few more. Give it 100% protection. Technical and the base gets cleared. Fargo has dropped off a rebel. Though, and he's trying to get himself an oil. And behind this, two arms dealers. This area is well defended now. Loads of tunnels and garrisons. The oils, supplies. Yeah, well established position here for Fargo now. No palace just yet. No uh, extra supply for Fargo just yet either. I think Fargo is very strong on Liquid Gold. I think he's played it many, many times. He's got super experience. 
And he's also captured the back oil there. So Boyka not on any oils currently. He does have more XP from the Helix Rush. But economically behind. But he is catching up though. He's now making these mini gunners. Now getting the oils, but the licks flies in there to a bunch of quads. Quads are going to push forward. They're going to try and stop this Gatling cannon. There is an outpost there as well. I wonder if Fargo will get close enough with the RPGs to stop that. It looks like he might. It's going to be close. 99, 99, 100. Dozer goes down. And the Lix is dead. I don't think that Lix needed to be wasted. The last Dozer for Boyka now is at the top right position. Boyka's now gone low power. Is he going to set overdrive? Just to get himself back online. Fargo's still pressing a little bit. Fargo could also enter the base here with a load of uh, RPGs. One or two miniguns could counter it all though. There are helix. Sorry, not helixes. There are MIGs as well. MIGs could uh, pretty much shut that down as well. Yeah, Boyka wants to get his CC online. Does not want to get hunted at this position. In the game. If he gets hunted now, you can pretty much say the infantry is going to lose. Okay, well defended there by Boyka. Utilizing the mix and the bunker. All the RPGs are dead. Fargo now coming in again from this right inside position. Fargo thinking about attacking that with one quad at a time by the looks of it. Not sure I agree with that. I think it's a mistake. But Fargo is entering the base and is going to catch the MiGs on the airfield, at least one of them. Yeah. It's always awkward when you've got MiGs already landed on the uh, airfield and there's quads approaching. Whether you take off or attack or whatever you do, they're going to die. Whether you stay on the airfield, they're going to die. That was a pretty poor MiG anyway. He probably could have escaped because Fargo wasn't targeting it. But... Fargo's now killed the oil at the back. Yeah, the MiGs are a bit weird. Like, some of the shots are just random, just on the road. But Boyka does have his CC up. He's got another war factory up as well. Fargo now pressing this front. It's finally cracked that uh, Gatlin there at the front, flushed out this building, and taken out this supply. TNT also in the base there, but that is going to get stopped. Does damage the war factory. But we can still force fire on the ground. He needs to stop that. Otherwise, he'll kill his own stuff. Yeah, Fargo is even further forward now with a tunnel here as well. That bunker will pretty much cover things. But carpet and artillery have been fired at the same time. So if Fargo had quads, he could have popped and stopped that. Pretty obvious. Could be here. One of the oils there is taken down. We can now make in the uh, outpost ECM Inferno Army, which is very formidable, actually. Very, very uh, tricky to beat. But the stealth, because the stealth doesn't have scud launchers, it has buggies, and can do TNTs on the army. But with the Greg Micro, it's still um, still a very formidable force. The infantry, despite the buggies, John Miguel, it's just them infernos. You hang around for any period of time with any big army, big uh, firestorm begins, and your army is toast, literally. Fargo's getting the refinery on the right. I like that. As you know, I'm a big fan of the refinery in Zero. Hour. And what I think you normally find in these games, in any infantry versus any kind of GLA game, is that the infantry will get a lot more XP than the GLA. Because if you break an outpost, it doesn't actually give you XP. It gives you XP for all the infantry inside, of which you don't get much. 
Whereas if you kill a quarter, you kill a tunnel, you get much more. So currently, Boyk is on like nearly 3,000. And Fargo's not even on 1,500 just yet. TNT comes in from Fargo. Does not reach though. John Miguel snipes a uh, outpost. One of the outposts there does get cracked open. We've got an angry mob here on the left-hand side. But we can make it an internet center from a very early uh, moment in the game. And he has neutrons on that right-hand side. Protecting the oil. Bit unusual, but uh, there we go. Neutrons cost $500, if I'm not mistaken, to upgrade from the landmines. Landmines are free for the bunker for infantry. Yeah, look, just look at how easy the XP is to rack up for Boyka. Whereas Fargo, he's earning a tiny little bit for every infantry guy that's dying. But there are quite a lot dying here. He's, he's working his way up. Yeah, he's, he's killing a lot, actually. He's nearly... Well, he's already vet two. Nearly vet three, no doubt. Fargo's here with one guy from an angry mob and a bunch of uh, TNTs here as well. <laughs> And there's then forgotten about him as well, so he's going to lose everything there. Yeah, that's a shame, because if Fargo had been micro that, even if he just pressed X and just had him on, like, a retaliation and spread him around, that probably could have caused some damage. There are some uh, random Gatlins in the back for Boyka, though. Don't know if he's scared there of a Jarman. It's a bit of an odd place to have him in the back like that. Yeah, this army has cleared so much now. Just look at everything that's been flattened in this game. Technical comes through. It's probably... Oh, no, it's empty, actually. It would have got that outpost if it had even one guy inside of it. Yeah, this army's been weakened a bit, but it's being reinforced as we speak. More outposts, only one ECM, assault troop crawler. Trucks venturing a little bit far forward there, so Fargo's able to pick it off. Mix come in and finish off the... Uh, I think that was an angry mob, was that the Jarman? Oh, it was Jarman, actually. So he was like a Vet 2 or Vet 3 Jarman, so... Didn't really want to be losing him, but I suppose if you're hanging around sniping a lot... Probably is eventually going to get picked off. Boyk is actually amazingly floating 10k there. EMP, mine drop, both at the same time. I wonder if he'd be able to get over to that army in time. He will. Huge firestorm created there by the mix, and it wipes out everything. Well played there from Boyka. Boyka also floating 13k. It's probably typing talk to me. And this replay at this moment. <laughs> John Mikel going to work again. Boykin needs to be putting his guys back inside of his outpost as soon as they get cracked open. Otherwise, John just have a, has a field day picking them all off. Uh, Fargo creeping forward even more. And this outpost is going to get picked off by the tunnel. And then the MiG's taken off again as well. Fargo building at the markets nicely. Big MIG hit on that tunnel inside of the base of Boyka. John McHale snipes another outpost. So TNT here as well. John making a run for it before the Infernos can discharge some damage. Got artillery coming in from Boyka is down in the bottom right position. All of these MiGs coming in once again. Maybe a little bit too many on, I think, was one one or two TNTs. Artillery finishes off a weakened oil already on the uh, bottom right. Yeah, Boyka's been level 5 for a few minutes now. Fargo's still like 1900 or 1850 off. Fargo coming in for a flank attack, though. A TNT could get in from this side on either of the war factories. 
Uh, Boyke has been okay with our Megs, I think. Got some good hits on some uh, good quad armies so far. Another Meg hit. And Fargo's not really fighting back here. One of them's disabled. Don't really know what's going on with that one. It's stuck kind of in the disabled one. Meanwhile, Boyke is also microing this. So he's microing two lots of stuff. Angry Mob coming in there. I think he got one of the Infernos. See, Fargo's still scrambling for every little bit of XP that he can get. John Miguel here again. It's the final outpost, I think. The guys are there inside of it, and they get picked off by the quads. Now these Infernos and ECMs will get picked off because they're kind of defenseless. The Infernos need range and need to be protected by something. So it's well done, really, by Fargo. It's not an easy thing to counter at that army that Boyku was throwing at him. We can make him heavy assault troop crawlers. It's not like he's getting those for free, by the way. Normally, you see like two together against the GLA if you're getting them for free from the uh, reinforcement pad, but he's actually making them. They're 2,400 each. I suppose he was floating between 10 and 12k before, though, so he did have the cash. Now he's got a more normal figure. The minigun is in there to shred in the quads, but they are going to get picked off now. I think it is AP ammo for the quads. Fargo is getting the bounty money for all of these as well, and he's getting closer and closer to level 5. Still a bit of work to do. But every infantry guy you pick off, every little bit closer, you are to victory. As soon as you hit Anthrax Bomb and Sneak Attack, it does change the, the balance of the game, in my opinion, quite a lot. Because one Anthrax can wipe out the entire army of infantry. One Anthrax can shut down like all of the hackers. One Sneak Attack can catch out all the mix. Maybe even the internet center. TNT there from Fargo is a little bit delayed because it was there a while. Ooh. A little bit of map hack going on there. A little bit of uh, friendly fire damage. Or oh, we go. Now, of course, he's not map hacking, but he... Uh, yeah, weirdly ran left. Did manage to get two hackers, so... Uh, he'll be happy with that. Is that an EMP or mines? His mines, his army's getting pretty wrecked though. Minimal damage there to Boyka. But Fargo is getting closer and closer to that inevitable level 5. Yeah, I feel like the balance of this is turning quite a bit. It's all been Boyka controlling the game. But Fargo has held and held, and now taking out pretty much all of the air units. Here comes an EMP. We'll disable the majority of the army there for Fargo. We can now disable in the quads. Well, the last remaining quad with the hackers. Yeah, Jean Mankell needs to get some scans going. He can pick off three hackers there alone. Migs coming do take out the German. I'm pretty sure he was about three there. Artillery coming in again from Boyka down to the bottom left position. Not sure what that's going to be on. There's no. Oh, there is a market there. It could be on that. I don't think so, though. I think it's on this oil at the back. Okay, guess the safe oil at the back. Yeah, Fargo now being level 5, and this army getting stuck in a bit of a choke area. Because you can either go that way, this way for a narrow passage, that way narrow passage, back through there. It's all like kind of narrow. You're pretty comfortable they're going to be stuck there. So an Anthrax bomb, which is exactly what's coming now, should be able to, to cause some good damage. But Fargo has placed it a little bit forward, and Boyker actually already went a little bit back. Not sure if Boyker predicted that or not, or if it's just look at a draw. 
I think Fargo should have waited a little bit longer before that um, army pressed a little bit more. As soon as it, like, gone back, cleared whatever it wants to clear, then pushes forward. As soon as it starts engaging that tunnel, it looks like it's going to, then you would uh, do the anthrax. I feel like Fargo could have got a bit more out of that. Okay, there are mines here. I'm not sure how, quite how these quads have gone over the mines. Maybe it's some Jesus quads that can walk on mines. Yeah, you want to be careful of angry mobs, especially with the AK-47. They can dish out some insane damage, especially against lightly uh, armored outposts. Okay, angry mob does get cleared. The angry mob, just for $800, just attack movement into the enemy base. They can provide so much... Uh, so much benefit, because it just takes away so much micro time from the infantry. You need to either lock two MIGs on it, or you need to make sure you have enough miniganers and micro your army back. Whereas if the angry mob does get in, it can just wreck the whole bases. Well, that's a good TNT there from Fargo. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I think uh, Fargo is very experienced in this matchup, as either the stealth or the infantry. I think he knows what he's doing, how to play it. And yeah, a few times the army for Boyka has looked strong, but Boy uh, Fargo has just uh, held it and weakened it and weakened it. Got a good TNT in. So he's mainly using quads, angry mobs, with the occasional TNT, no buggies in sight. Well, the engagement continues in the middle. Fargo's prediction will be slowed a little bit. It needs to get some uh, workers there to clear these mines. We could gain ground again, but... The MIGs always need to be working to stop the angry mob. Even if, like, a half HP one survives, it can still wreck entire armies of the outposts. Carpet comes in from Boyka. Takes out a few of the workers, but that supply can be uh, remade. We can make him mainly flamers now, actually. At the front here, but on the left-hand side, still has a heavy amount of outposts. Oh, speaking of buggies, as I say, he doesn't use them. Then uh, one shows up, actually two show up. With your market count, we've got a skid storm on the way as well. It's a few markets, not a crazy amount. Probably uh, favours Boyka with the economy as more hackers, I think. Yeah, I count 11. Plus the refinery there for Fargo. 11 markets. Yeah, Skidstorm is now out. That can one-shot the internet center, by the way, so you've got to be careful. Ideally, you don't want to be taking that to the face. Boyka hasn't beaconed it. Mix constantly coming in. Takes out one quad there. Still a mixture of outposts and flamers for Poika. Artillery comes in, takes out one of the markets. Nice flame wall there. A lot of these quads getting weakened. One of the outposts goes down in the back. Yeah, Boyka's hackers inside of there now collected on $10 each. Plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 hackers. Oh, wait. And three there. So that's. Oh, and one there. Wait, did I see. Did I count all there before? Don't think so. It's like 19, 22, 25 ish, give or take. There's one there as well. So, yeah, like roughly 25, 26 hackers against like 11 or 12 markets. Probably quite even. Now, re we'll rebuild that market on the right. But that's good. Storm is going to cause some major problems because it can one-shot the internet center. Every, every hacker inside of it will die. Whoa. Hackers just died there as well, but also the army's dying. You see what I mean about this anthrax bomb? And GG. Whoa. <laughs> well, Fargo held. I actually thought that was going to go really late, you know, because the title was wow, wow, wow. I actually thought that was going to go really late because I swear one of the replays in my folder was like 376 kilobytes. That's normally like... I don't know if that's an hour game. I don't know what that is. Usually that's quite big, but yeah, Boyka uh, looks like a bit of a rage quit. I have no doubt he didn't say... Uh, he, he said GG there. I have no doubt he just quit. He doesn't even surrender and check the map. He just literally press, presses quit. Uh, but yeah, you saw how powerful that Anthrax bomb is. We've seen um, infantry win against Stealth or GLA on that map before when Fargo played against Size and it went like 72 minutes, an hour and 12. Uh, but sadly, Boyka was not able to get enough done. A few times he looked really, really strong, but Fargo held, held, held. First time for X bomb wasn't amazing. But that second one there just ended it quite abruptly, actually. I was not expecting it, expecting it to end there. But I suppose if the game did continue three more minutes, then Boyka would have probably lost anyway due to that Skid Storm one shot in the Internet Center plus all the hackers. So the super weapons in the end there are quite unfair, I think, and unbalanced. But GG, well played. Let me know in the comments. I will see you in the next one.